It's Jenny and welcome back to my channel. This story ain't over today I'm really excited to bring you all of my fall book recommendations So I think I've done this video once before and I'll leave that linked down below But this time I'm only recommending books that I've read before and I'm gonna be recommending them in different Categories of the types of books that you might want to pick up in autumn So these can range from dark academia to classics to gothic horror I'm gonna try and hit every type of reader for the fall and whether you're like a spooky reader or just like here for the cozy vibes I feel like there's a book for you today. I have about 40 books to recommend to you all today So I'm gonna keep it short for each one and just let you know know the highlights and what you might enjoy about each one. So without further ado, let's jump into my fall book recommendations. Just before we jump into my fall book recommendations, I did want to talk a little bit about the sponsor of today's video, which is Care Of. So with fall just around the corner and seasons changing, I am definitely the type of person who just wants to reset and rethink my daily routines. So this is where Care Of comes in. Care Of is a subscription and supplement service that makes it easy to stick to a consistent vitamin routine. Over the past couple weeks, I've built up a new fall morning routine that I am absolutely obsessed with. So I get up at 6.30, I usually like brush my teeth, wash my face, that kind of thing. But the moment I step out of bed, the first thing I actually do is pick up my Care Of packet for the day and I have my vitamin supplements. It's the first thing I do and I just have it on my dresser at the foot of my bed so I know to always just grab it right before I go to the bathroom and it's like in my line of sight. From there I make myself some breakfast and I do some journaling and then I've also been getting into writing more in the mornings so overall it's just been a really wonderful fall routine and care of has definitely been a huge part of that. When I did start my care of subscription I took a quiz on their website and it recommended me the supplements that I should take for my different needs and wants. So this is my little card that's made for me and it tells me the different supplements that are part of of my daily little packages here. These are super cute, they're personalized, they say my name on them, and it just feels like so good that someone is like looking out for me personally. All of these have definitely helped. I feel like I have a clearer mind and just have had more of a stable stomach over the past few weeks, and I have care of to thank for that. Along with my daily set of vitamins, I also got a sleep blend, which was really helpful for me because it's for sleep support. I take one of those about half an hour before it goes to bed and it really helps me stay consistently asleep. I don't know how it works for other people, but personally for me, that's how it's worked for me. And it's definitely made me feel more rested by the morning. With all that said, I really love what Care Of is doing for my daily fall routine. And if you're interested in checking them out, go take Care Of's quiz online and see what's recommended for you. You can use my code Jenny50 to get 50% off your first order. Honestly, I think it's a great deal and it's definitely helped me reset my routine for the fall. So I hope Care Of can do the same for you. Thank you so much to Kara for sponsoring this video and now let's get into my fall book recommendations. Alrighty, we're gonna start off with one of my favorites to read during the fall which is dark academia books. So most of the books that I'm gonna be recommending for this category involve a school setting of some kind, usually like a college or university setting, involve some dark themes and some spookiness to them but they are definitely like cozy reads and also just like perfect for this time when people are like starting school back up. And I know there's a lot of discourse with dark academia about how it can sort of glamorize and romanticize academia and some of the bad parts about it. But I do feel like while some of the books in this list do do that, they also show the dark side of academia and how it can be very detrimental to people's mental health and how it has hidden terrors to it and just so many things wrong with the academic setting and the pressures of it. So really excited to dive into all these. The first one that I have to recommend is one of my personal favorites. It's like a thriller on its own and that is If We Were Villains by ML Rio. This is a book that I discovered a few years ago and absolutely fell in love with. So many people had been raving about it. This one is great if you love Shakespeare. It's about a bunch of Shakespearean actors who end up in a murderous situation. It has a brilliant cast of characters that are all deeply troubled and have really interesting backstories. So if you like sort of like a character driven thriller, this one's a really fun one. And I loved all of the like spooky moments and just the like vibe of the whole story. Next we have a book that I'm currently in the middle of 
of, but it's definitely delivering on a dark academia vibes. And that is Babel by R.F. Kuang. This one is definitely a book that shows the dark side of academia and also the idea of like knowledge as power. This one specifically deals with colonialism and how the British Empire sort of used knowledge and like the transfer of knowledge and translation against the countries and places that it colonized. And I think it's such an interesting discussion, but it also looks into a group of students who are going to Oxford and they're all sort of marginalized identities. And the main character is Robin, who is a Chinese boy who's taken from China and partly raised in London to sort of go to Oxford and be one of these translation students. And it's just a fascinating story so far. And I'm so excited for what else it's going to go through in the later parts of the book. And it's definitely delivering on a cozy school vibe while also having a bit of a darkness to it. Next, I have Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. This is a particular favorite of mine. It's definitely very, very spooky, much more spooky than some of the other dark academias that I'm recommending. This one does have a bit of a fantasy element to it as well. It's got magic, it's got ghosts. It follows a main character who can see ghosts and that ability has been a real detriment to her life and it's caused some huge problems for her. But she's also a character who's been through a lot and she ends up at Yale in this unique situation where she is helping out this sort of society called the Ninth House that manages the magic use of the other houses in Yale. And on top of the ghosts and the magic, there's also a murder mystery going on when these young women start going missing across campus and Alex is sort of trying to figure out that Whole situation. This book is a slow one to start, so bear that in mind, but it does have a lot of vibes of the university setting and like Yale and the history of it, and it really brings all of that together in the telling of the story. I also really love this one because it has a slight romance between two of the characters, and it's to die for because the tense will they won't they is just immaculate vibes, and I feel like my favorite type of romance to read in the fall, so if you're into that. This is a great one. Another thing I do want to mention is that this book is told in a non-linear format. So if you're not really into that, you may not enjoy this one just because it does affect your reading experience. And this one is definitely told like out of order and you start to realize things as things go along, but it's hard to follow at first. The next one is a book that I've actually only read the self-published version, but I'm hoping to read the like traditionally published version soon. But that is The Atlas Six by Olive Blake. This is a favorite of mine from last year. And I thought it was just such a wonderfully written sort of character driven fantasy, but also slight dark academia. So it follows a set of six characters from all different walks of life and different races and backgrounds. And they are all brought together by this man named Atlas who invites them to become caretakers as part of the Alexandrian society. But before they can become these caretakers, they have to compete against each other to earn their spot. And one of them will be eliminated. So over the course of the year, they are experiencing all this knowledge and going through these lessons together and discovering the deep parts of magic. But there's also this added pressure of like the different relationships going on and the tense alliances that they have and one of them will be eliminated in the end so like they start to sort of gang up on each other and it's just a really interesting situation and what I also love is that each of them has their own specific magical abilities and the way that that sort of connects to their personalities was super interesting so if you like a character driven story if you want more magic to your dark academia this is definitely one to pick up the next book is one that I'm not sure it's actually a dark academia I would classify it closer to a horror but I thought I would put it in this category because it is set in school. And that book is Bunny by Mona Awad. This book is such a wild ride of a story and it follows a main character who is slightly unreliable, I would say. And she's in this graduate fiction writing class and she ends up getting embroiled in this group of girls who call themselves the Smut Salon or have this thing called the Smut Salon. And it just becomes this really interesting situation with slight magic or horry bits to the book. And honestly, while reading, I couldn't tell what was real and what was not and it was just an interesting experience but it did have a deep look into female friendships it has a satirical vibe to it and I think one way to describe it is Alice in Wonderland you enter and you don't know what's going on but you feel like you've learned something by the end next I have Ace of Spades by Farida Abike Iamide and this one is definitely a dark academia that looks into the dark side of schooling and the prejudices that you can face in school systems and this one's not in university it's actually in high school in a 
private school. And this book follows two black students at this private academy who are randomly being targeted by this anonymous figure named Ace. They're sending these text messages about their different secrets to the whole student body. And the two of these characters are just trying to figure out what's going on in the mystery of Ace. And they start to discover some really deep and dark secrets about their school. This one's also super queer and it's just a really fun and like endearing time. I really liked the main characters and I felt for them. They did make some really dumb decisions, but I really felt for them. And all the reveals in this book were just so spot on. I was so astounded by all of them and it was just a really enjoyable thriller as well. Next I have The Maidens by Alex Michaelids. This one is one that has huge dark academia vibes, especially in the sense that in some definitions of dark academia, it has to have some sort of relation to the classics like Latin, Greek, mythology, and that kind of thing. And this one definitely has that. It's a bit of a psychological thriller, I would say. It follows a main character who's a group therapist and her niece gets into some trouble at her university. And so she travels down there to see what's up. Her niece's friend has been brutally murdered. And so she's trying to figure out what's sort of going on. And she suspects one of the professors there who is the leader of this group called the Maidens, which is this group of young university student girls who are in this like study group for the classics. And it all just seems really, really fishy. There's like two perspectives as well. You get the perspective of the murderer. And it was just really interesting overall and like really mysterious. If you really like Greek mythology, you'll probably like this one. If you don't like mythology, you may not enjoy this one. Next we have Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. This one is said to be sort of a gothic infused dark academia horror. I will say it's more on like that gothic horror side. It is set at this like exclusive academy called Catherine House and it's like this three-year college and everyone who attends is sort of like taken off to this school which is like in the middle of nowhere and you're not allowed to have any contact with the outside world. So it has this sort of vibe of like a haunted house but not really. It is a bit of a dark academia I would say because it does sort of examine the idea of exclusivity of knowledge and how it's like hoarded and I just found it to be a weird sort of fever dream of a book. If you're into books that have like all vibes no plot this is definitely one to pick up. I personally didn't love this one but I do think I can see other people enjoying it. Alrighty speaking of school let's get into some classics that you can pick up for the fall. All of these are some personal favorites of mine and they all have some sort of spooky element to them or like a gothic element to them. A few of these can be classified as gothic horrors as well which will be the next category I get into. But let's just start with the first one which is Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte. This is one of my favorite classics ever. I actually read it in high school and fell in love with it. This one is definitely gothic horror at its finest. It's got some really creepy elements to it and a really interesting character journey of the main character. It follows her main character Jane Eyre who you follow from when she's a child into her adult life. And she is just this like very poor girl who's sort of hated by her step family. And she ends up going to boarding school and like becoming a governess. And she finds herself getting employed by this mysterious man named Mr. Rochester. So Mr. Rochester happens to have a young girl as his ward. And so the main character, Jane Eyre, ends up becoming a governess for this young girl at Mr. Rochester's house. And it ends up being this like creepy situation while she's in the house and has a lot of gothic vibes. And it is a bit of a feminist book. I would say for its time and I loved Jane Eyre as a character as well. So if you like gothic horrors, if you like haunted house vibes, if you want a character driven story and a bit of a romance, this is definitely one to pick up. Next I have a classic that I actually wrote a bunch of essays on in university so I feel like I know it intimately now and that book is Frankenstein by Mary Shelley. This book has so many layers to it and it's definitely different from like the Frankenstein that you think of in your head with like the green and like the bold from like movies and stuff. Frankenstein's monster is a totally different beast in this book and Frankenstein himself, the Dr. Frankenstein who creates the monster, he's also an interesting character. This one is a dense book to read so keep that in mind but it definitely has its spooky moments and moments where the characters are just sort of thinking about life and what it means to be human and monster versus human that all these like meandering thoughts I feel like are very fitting for the season and I enjoyed my time reading this one although it was dense. Another thing I will say before I let this one go is that it is super dramatic I feel like in the way that it's written very much in that sort of like 1800s writing way it's super dramatic and I just loved it so much. Next I have another very dramatic classic and that is Wuthering Heights by Emily Bronte so this is Charlotte Bronte's sister. This is one of my favorite classics also and it heavily involves the relationship between Catherine and Heathcliff who are 
trapped in this tragic romance, I would say. This one is definitely passionate brooding vibes in this Yorkshire setting on the moors with the cold wind air and you just want to curl up with a fire and read this one and just fall into the passionate love story of Catherine and Heathcliff. This is definitely a book where societal pressures come in between the characters but also their massive egos which I think makes for a really dramatic love story and I think it fits for this like time period as well and it's just like heartbreaking but also like fantastic in terms of vibes. I love this one. If you're dramatic like me, you'll probably love it. If you don't like dramatic and very dense writing, I would steer clear. Next, I have a couple Shakespeare plays, which I think are perfect for this time of the year, but you're probably familiar with them if you grew up in a North American schooling system. So the two I want to recommend are Macbeth and Hamlet. I don't have a physical copy of Macbeth, but Macbeth is a fun one if you are into witches and ghosts and like some cutthroat female characters and just lots of murder and ambition. It's a fun one for that. Hamlet, on the other hand, is a very internal journey of a play. This one also has its like spooky elements and involves a lot of death imagery and themes of death and also has some murder to it and some ghosts as well, which is a lot of fun. And it also delves into the theme of madness, which also Macbeth deals with, but this one I think delves more into the idea of madness through multiple characters. I feel like Macbeth is a great one if you want something dramatic and sort of plot driven, whereas Hamlet is a great one if you want to think a little bit harder, if you want to cozy up and just delve into Hamlet's mindscape. The final classic that I'm going to recommend is a little bit more of a modern classic. It's from the 1950s, I think, and that is The Haunting of Hill House by Shirley Jackson. This is one of my favorite classics ever. This one is the traditional haunted house story but with some queer elements, with some really interesting characters, and with some really brilliant commentary on women's places in that time period. This basically follows this doctor who is like an occult scholar, whatever that means, and he invites these four different people to this haunted house to sort of observe them in the habitat of this haunted house and see how it affects them and their lives and their psyches. And it's a really fascinating story and seeing like the tense sort of relationships and builds between these four characters was really, really interesting. And I think it just had so much subtext to it, which is a feature I think of haunted house stories. So absolutely loved it. It's a really short book, but an amazing time. Alrighty, next up I have one of my favorite genres for the fall and that is gothic horror. So I only have three books for this one because surprisingly I haven't read that many gothic horrors. I have read a few classic gothic horrors, but in terms of modern day fiction, not very many. So the first one I have is Within These Wicked Walls by Lauren Blackwood. Personally, this wasn't my favorite book ever, but it is a really interesting book and really interesting concept. This is a bit of a retelling of Jane Eyre, but like very, very loose and more of an inspiration, I would say. And it follows the main character who is something called the Debtera, which is a person who cleanses households of the evil eye and like different spirits and that kind of thing. And so our main character is hired by this young heir named Magnus Rochester, who has some things going on in his home. And from there we have some haunted house vibes, some gothic horror vibes. I really liked each of the characters and how vulnerable they were. This one is a YA, so I do feel like it was on the younger side in terms of themes, but it was still really interesting and had some great side characters as well and it does end off in a more happier note I would say than some other gothic horrors I've seen. The next gothic horror that I want to talk about is personally not a favorite of mine but I do think it's a fun one to recommend and that is The Death of Jane Lawrence. This is a book that I picked up because I knew it was a gothic horror and I was like I want all of these vibes and it did deliver on quite a few of the gothic horror vibes but I do think it was more on the all vibes no plot sort of situation and I didn't love the ending but I do think it delivers on the gothic horror aspect of things. It had a really solid beginning as well and it was an interesting situation. It follows a young woman whose parents have died and she's sort of adopted by her aunt and uncle I think and she doesn't want to keep the burden on them so she's looking for an arranged marriage and she ends up in this agreement with this young doctor in town who owns a house like outside of town and they agree to sort of marry each other for convenience and she ends up moving in with him into his creepy old mansion house thing and from there we find out some deep and disturbing secrets and I will say it was quite an interesting one. I was just like 
thrown I think by the end and it definitely delves more into like the horror aspect of gothic horror by the end but it was still really interesting and had a psychological element to it as well so overall a fun one next we have my favorite gothic horror ever and that is Mexican Gothic by Silvia Moreno Garcia for those of you who have been following my channel for a while you know that Silvia Moreno Garcia is one of my favorites ever she is such an amazing author and this is probably my favorite of all of her books Mexican Gothic follows a young woman whose cousin has recently married this like English lord in the Mexican countryside and she is sending these like strange letters back to our main characters saying that like the house is alive and that there are people walking through walls and that her husband is like doing these terrible things and so the main character is intrigued and she wants to find out what's happening to her cousin so she ends up traveling to the Mexican countryside where her cousin is staying in high place and at high place she discovers some very deep dark, disturbing things. And this is definitely a gothic horror. It's got all of those elements to it and the haunted house vibe to it and the creepy residents of the house and just lots of secrets that are going on. This one also has huge themes of feminism and colonialism and just like the balance of power. And I absolutely loved every moment of it. It's also got a bit of a romance and just some really, really interesting revelations by the end. And you will never look at mushrooms the same by the end of this. Let me just tell you. I absolutely love this book so much. If you're gonna take one of the gothic horror recommendations off this list, please let it be this one. Alrighty, the next theme of books that I'm gonna go through are slightly spooky sci-fi fantasies. So these are all the sci-fi fantasies that I feel like fit the vibe of the season, the coziness of fall, but they also have a slightly spooky or creepy or unsettling aspect to them that I think makes them fun for this time of year. So the first one we have is a Vicious by V.E. Schwab. I think anything V.E. Schwab writes is slightly spooky in some way, but this one in particular is an interesting one because it's not necessarily a fantasy, it's more of a sci-fi, and it deals with these two college students, and it's told in multiple timelines, but it deals with these two college students who end up in this like very intense rivalry 10 years later and they're sort of hunting each other down. But when they're in college, they are looking into the idea of EOs or extraordinaries. So people with extraordinary abilities, so like superhero abilities, that kind of thing. But the way that it's structured and told feels a bit like a dark academia, but also the way that it's like a non-linear format and you know, they're hunting each other, it feels a bit like a thriller as well. I think what makes this a slightly spooky and fun book for me is the murderous intent of the characters and the dark and twisted state of their minds. So if you're really into character driven sci-fi fantasies and if you're looking for one that fits the vibe of this season then I would highly recommend Vicious. Next we have Legendborn by Tracy Dion. This is one of my favorite books to recommend for the fall because it hits all of the vibes and honestly when I think of it I just think of like crinkling leaves and like magic and school and all of the vibes. This basically follows our main character Brie whose mother has recently died and she ends up at this like pre-college program where she discovers this secret society called the Legendborn. They are a group of people who are like descended from Arthur and the Round Table and believe that Arthur and the Round Table are real and they are tasked with keeping the balance in the world and fighting off demons and creatures from the other world. Our main character Brie gets embroiled in this world of the Legendborn but she also starts to realize that they may have something to do with her mother's death. So she's trying to solve this mystery while also dealing with the spooky things going on at the school and and falling in love. In the meantime, there's like two love interests in this book that I love. It was a great love triangle. And by the end, there's just some really amazing reveals that will just be mind blowing for you. And I just love the magic system as well in this book. It was really interesting. And the whole vibe of the book was just like perfect, like fall semester vibes, which I just loved so much. I remember reading this in the fall too, in 2020, and just being so in love with it. The next book that I have is The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab. This one has less of a spooky element to it, but I do think it's a fun book to pick up for the fall. It has the vibe, the coziness of it. You're following our main character, Addie LaRue, who has been cursed to live forever, but be forgotten by everyone she meets. So it's got this lonely and longing vibe to it that I think is perfect for fall. And you're following Addie LaRue over like decades and decades of her life as she's like repeatedly falling in love and being forgotten by all of these people. And she's just trying to find her place. And it's also intersected with scenes from our present day 
okay with like a newer love interest. And this entire time she's sort of running away from the devil who originally cursed her. So the parts with like the devil who curses her are really interesting and kind of spooky as well. So I love those parts. And I think overall it's just a really like cozy book to curl up with for the fall. Next I have The Inheritance of Orchidea Divina by Zoraida Cordova. This one is like peak spooky vibes and like magical realism vibes, but also kind of creepy as well. This book is one that like I went into thinking it was going to be slightly more happy than it was, but it definitely had this really like dark and mysterious undercurrent to it, which I really loved. Basically in this book we follow many different characters who are all descendants of this one matriarch named Orchidea Divina, and she has invited all of her descendants to her home to witness her death and also give them her inheritance. It's this very interesting and weird situation and it's got huge magical realism vibes and lots of magical bits to it, but also some creepy goings on as many of the members of the family start disappearing slash going down. It was a fantastic book also because it's intersected with scenes from Orchidia's own life when she is younger before she like births this whole descendant line. And it was really interesting following her journey as well. So if you were someone who didn't love Addie LaRue because you wanted some more depth to the story, I think this one's a great one because Orchidia's journey is just so fascinating and it's really rooted in her Latin heritage and I just loved it overall. This is a fantastic one and just has like all those like slightly unsettling vibes for the season which I loved. All right next I have These Violent Delights by Chloe Gong. This is a historical fiction fantasy set in the 1920s in Shanghai and it is a loose retelling of Romeo and Juliet. This one has all the like tragic vibes of Romeo and Juliet with some fun and banterous characters but also some definitely spooky vibes with a monster running amok in Shanghai and causing some sort of plague in the city. If you're looking for something that's more on the like adventure slash fantasy, YA fantasy side, this is definitely a fun one to pick up, but it's also got that mystery and spooky vibe that will make it fun for the season. The final book that I'll recommend for this category is The Diviners by Liva Bray. This one is more of a historical fiction with a magical element in it, but it is set in the 1920s also in New York, I believe, and it follows a huge cast of characters that come from all different walks of life, but they are all sort of being brought together by these sort of occultish murders that are happening in New York. Another part of this is that each of the characters has a magical ability that is sort of unexplained, and you're trying to sort of uncover all the mysteries behind each of the characters, but also like the murder that's going on. This book also has some like perspective chapters from the murder or like scenes of the murderer doing the murdering, and it was so interesting to read because they were honestly super spooky to me, and I was like, you know, scared shitless and I loved it. It was fantastic. So if you like creepy, murdery vibes, this is a fun one too. All right, next I have a few mystery thrillers that have huge fall vibes to them. So the first one is Truly Devious by Maureen Johnson. This one is such a cool mystery, YA mystery, with a really spunky and fun main character. It follows our main character, Stevie Bell, who is like a true crime aficionado. And she ends up going to this private academy called Ellingham Academy. And it was started by this man many years ago. And there's this whole mystery surrounding him and his family when his daughter went missing and like these murders happened and to this day he has this inheritance for his daughter that went missing even after his passing and so Stevie is intrigued by this mystery and this is actually a mystery series so there's multiple books so over the course of the three books I think she is trying to solve this like mystery of Ellingham Academy and like the missing daughter but each of the books themselves also has like a self-contained mystery within the school with a murder or like something going missing or whatever and she's trying to solve all of that. It definitely has a bit of a Nancy Drew vibe to it as well with Stevie Bell's character, but I really loved just the different reveals and the red herrings and the way that the mystery was crafted. Next I have one that is definitely more on like the cozy mystery side and that is A Study in Charlotte by Brittany Cavallaro. This is a series of books that is based off of Sherlock Holmes, so this one is like a play off of A Study in Scarlet. And basically in this version of our world, Sherlock Holmes and Watson were real people and so it follows the descendants of those two people. So we have Charlotte Holmes, so gender-bent Sherlock Holmes, and we have James Watson or Jamie Watson. And they become begrudging friends when they are both put in a private school in Connecticut. And from there, it's a bit of a like, will they, won't they romance, but also some like self-contained mysteries in each of these books. And mainly I love the series, not really for the mysteries, but more for like the cozy vibes and the main characters. I really love them as people. And it was just a fun, cute, 
read to have for the fall time. Next, I have one of my favorite thrillers ever, which I read last year and just blew me away. This one could be slightly categorized as dark academia, but I wouldn't really because it's more of like the drama of the relationships between the characters rather than like the school aspect really. So that book is In My Dreams I Hold a Knife by Ashley Winstead. This book is told in multiple timelines, but it sort of starts with all these characters coming back to their university for a reunion. And from there you find out many years ago when they were in university, a murder had occurred in their friend group and one of them was suspected of doing this, but it was never proven and everyone has sort of fallen apart after that. And there's all these tense relationships and very flawed and misguided characters and they were all honestly so fascinating to follow. The book, however, is actually told mainly through the perspective of the main character, Jessica Miller. And she's an interesting character herself and definitely an unreliable narrator as well. But I think what was interesting was her psychological state as we're following her. And I think the whole book was just crafted so well and had some really dramatic moments as well. If you're really into gossip and drama, this book has a ton of it. And I was just fascinated by all of the different things that were going on back when they were in university, but also like later in their lives. And there was just so much drama. Like I just loved having all the tea, but also like the murder. It was so fantastic. It was really good. Highly recommended as a thriller. The last thriller I'll recommend is a YA thriller. And that is Allegedly by Tiffany D. Jackson. This one is definitely a psychological thriller with a hugely unreliable main character. This book follows her main character, Mary B. Addison, who allegedly killed a baby. So at nine years old, she allegedly was convicted of killing a baby and she goes to baby jail. And many years later, she ends up in a group home with all these other girls who have been in baby jail. So the book is like following our main character, Mary, as she is sort of going through a healing cycle. And the entire time you're just trying to understand her as a character and her psychological state as she's going through it. And there's like so many things that happen in this book. And it was honestly just so fascinating and just a wild ride because you never know if you are assuming the right thing. And I think the title says it all, allegedly. I just loved every moment of it. It's definitely a book that keeps you on your toes and had some really vivid side characters, but it's also told in a really interesting way with a very unreliable character. Alrighty, next up, for those of you who are not into any kind of spooky, horror -y vibes at all for this season, I have some literary slash contemporary fiction that is just cozy and nice to read for this season. So the first one is a literary fiction that's a personal favorite of mine, and that is The Remains of the Day by Kazuo Ishiguro. I read this quite a few years ago and fell in love with it for some reason. I just love the way that it's written, and it's a very deeply internal book. It follows this man who is an English butler in the very insular and fading world of post-war England. And he works for this like manor home for this man named Lord Darlington. And at the beginning of the book, he is at the end of his three decade career and he goes on a long drive and he's sort of thinking back on his service for Lord Darlington and his belief in serving this great gentleman. But as he thinks back on this time through like the war and all of this, he realizes that you know, Lord Darlington may not have been as great of a gentleman as he thought he was. And it's just this like really interesting look into this man who has dedicated his life to another person and to service. And I think that aspect made him such a fascinating character to follow and unpack. I think he is slightly deluded in a way which was just really interesting to read about. This is a very slow and like inching forward book, but has some really interesting introspection. And I just loved it so much. It's one that I think about endlessly to this day. Next, I have a YA contemporary that's a favorite of mine, and that is Turtles All the Way Down by John Green. I think the vibe of this cover and just the vibe of this book is really reminiscent of fall. It follows our main character, Aza, who has OCD and some anxiety disorders as well. And you are following sort of her mental journey and psychological journey over the course of, I think, a season. And I think while this book has like a plot element to it, which involves this mystery of this billionaire who has gone missing and like Aza and her friend trying to figure it out and then them getting into contact with the billionaire's son and like a romance there. Although there's like this slight plot to it, I think the major part of the book is the psychological journey of Aza and what she's going through personally. And I think that was the most fascinating part of the book. It definitely has cozy vibes to it and like this internal journey to it that I think makes it perfect for fall. And by the end of it, you will just like relate so hard to Aza, I think. 
and anyone who has ever had anxiety or struggles with anxiety I think will understand many of the parts of this book. The last thing I will mention that I absolutely love about this book is that it really considers how we think of ourselves and our journeys as a story and how we write our own story. And I think it's just a beautiful book and a wonderful literary fiction. The next book is another favorite YA contemporary of mine and that is All My Rage by Saba Tahir. This one is a heartbreaking book of star-crossed lovers and just some deeply harrowing things that happen. It follows our main characters Sal and Noor who grow up in this very insular and small town called Juniper in California and this is based off the author Saba Tahir's own experience growing up in the Mojave Desert and this book also has a generational aspect to it as well. It follows one of the characters mothers back when she was in Pakistan before she immigrated to the states and like her whole journey and this book deals a lot with grief and just the the circumstances that we are put in and sort of examines this idea of potential and wasted potential and just so many other incredible themes and it also has like this really beautiful romance to it that will just tear your heart to pieces and I think something about it and like the introspective nature of it and like the quiet beauty of it is so reminiscent of fall for me and it is set in like a school term as well so I think it just has all of the vibes for the fall and will just break your heart if you're looking for one to like make you cry. The next book is a weird one and I don't necessarily know if you could classify it as literary fiction or if it's more of a horror but it has like very very small aspects of a horror so I think mostly it's like a contemporary fiction and more of a psychological book as well. That book is All's Well by Mona Awa. This is the same author as Bunny. This book follows a college theater director who is originally actually an actor but after a fatal accident she ends up with chronic pain and unable to continue with her career so she ends up being this college theater director and so she's just going through it and really struggling with her chronic pain and like going to multiple doctors and trying to get validated with her pain and you know find a solution and that kind of thing and so she's sort of meandering through life and amidst all this she's trying to put on Shakespeare's all's well with her college class but they are bent on putting on a production of Macbeth instead and this book has a lot of Shakespearean themes and brings in different elements from different plays as well and mainly this book just deals with the psychological state of our main character and it's definitely like a book with a bit of an unreliable narrator I would say and I honestly really really enjoyed this book I thought it was such an interesting read and I loved the deep look into the main character psyche and the commentary on how we treat chronic pain in the medical system and especially women's chronic pain and I just found it super interesting so yeah if you're looking for a weird book this is definitely one to pick up. Alrighty, we're on to the last category before I get into some new releases that I'm excited to pick up. So this category is for horror books. So like straight up horror with some really disturbing themes and things going on. So the first book is probably one of my favorites on this like entire list of recommendations. And that is The Southern Book Club's Guide to Slaying Vampires by Grady Hendrix. I discovered this book last year, even though people have been raving about it for years. And it was the best decision because it's such an amazing book and an incredible horror. This book is set in the 1990s and follows our main character Patricia Campbell, who is the perfect suburban mother. And this book sort of takes the idea of what if your mom had to fight Dracula and sort of dramatizes it. It's really that situation. Basically in Patricia Campbell's world in her small town where everyone knows each other, a mysterious stranger shows up and he seems to charm everyone, including her initially. But as she ends up interacting with him more, she starts to learn some deep and dark secrets about him and finds out that he may actually be a vampire. And this is a book with so much like mom power to it, I feel like it really delves into the idea of like what we expect of mothers and especially at that time and how oftentimes domestic work isn't valued the same as other work and it's just such an interesting book that both has like vampires in it but also amazing amazing social commentary and I think that's what I loved about this book overall. On top of that it also has some really really creepy creepy scenes to it and just horrific moments which I loved and it definitely felt like an old school horror movie but also like one of those like creepy passages in a classic horror novel. If you're looking for an addicting read that will just have you turning the pages to find out what happens next as well, this is definitely a book to pick up. Next I have another vampire book and that is Certain Dark Things by Silvio Moreno Garcia. This one is less creepy and just more like adventurous and just 
a fun and interesting book to read, but it also has vampires in it and different types of vampires, which I found really fascinating. It basically follows our main character who is sort of running from a different clan of vampires and she ends up getting wrapped up with this young man in the city that she's in. And it's also set in this like alternate reality where like vampires are unknown phenomenon to people. So overall, just like an interesting setting, I would say. And also really fun because it's got a bit of a thriller element to it because you're trying to figure out like who's after who. And there's other side characters who you're getting perspectives from. And overall, it's just really interesting and had perfect paranormal vibes to it. Speaking of paranormal, the next book is also similar and that is The Savage Song by V. Schwab. This book is actually a lot creepier than it would seem, I think, as like a YA fantasy horror book but it's also got a lot of light moments and a really nice friendship and relationship between the main characters basically this is like romeo and juliet without the romance plus monsters it is set in this fictional city called verity where monsters have run amok and basically monsters are starting to spring up in any place where human violence occurs and so there's different classes of monsters based off of the severity of the violence and from there we have two main characters kate and august one is a human one is a monster and these two characters are definitely on opposing sides, but end up in a begrudging alliance, which just blooms into this wonderful like friendship that I absolutely loved. And this does have a second book to it, but this first one was just equally amazing and just like nicely paced as well. And I loved all the monsters that were in this one that just made it so interesting. So it definitely has like spooky, monstery vibes to it. So if you're looking for something like that, this is a fun one. All right, the last horror novel that I have to recommend is White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson. And let me tell you guys, this is the perfect haunted house story to pick up. Everything about this was just so well executed, like many of Tiffany D. Jackson's other books. And I was just so captivated and wanted to know what was gonna happen next. Basically, this follows our main character Marigold who has a younger brother and then her mother has recently remarried a white man So Marigold's black. Her mother has recently remarried a white man and he has a daughter as well And her mother's a bit of a scholar. I think I forget what exactly she does But they get invited to this small midwestern town called Cedarwood and they are offered free lodging and free home As long as she comes to like work there and all that and so this family goes to this small town And it's the perfect horror setup and they are given this house to live in and it's a creepy situation from there as different things start going wrong and there are huge social themes to this book and commentary which I really really loved and there's a bit of a romance as well with the main character and also aspects of the main character going through her own mental health journey and honestly the entire book had so many layers to it that I loved but all of it sort of connected back to this idea of the haunted house which I just loved so much and it was so well done so if you're looking for a haunted house story this is the perfect one to pick up. Alrighty so those are all of my recommendations so now I wanted to talk a little bit about some new releases that have recently come out that I am excited to pick up and that I think you may want to pick up as well. But again, I haven't read these, so I can't really tell you whether they're good or not. I can just tell you that I'm also excited to pick them up. So the first one that I have is The Weight of Blood by Tiffany D. Jackson. So I absolutely love anything this woman writes and this is her new horror novel, but this one is a slasher and it is slightly based off of Carrie by Stephen King, which I recently learned. So super excited for this one. It's like up prom, it's got blood, slasher elements. I'm really excited for it, we'll see how it goes. The next book that I have is The Hacienda by Isabel Canez. This one is like a mashup of Mexican Gothic and Rebecca by Daphne du Maurier. It's definitely a gothic horror and it's got a haunted house aspect to it. And overall, it just seems like it's gonna be a really great read and another gothic horror that I can add to my list. The next few books are some horrors and some thrillers that I've heard about and I don't know too much about, so I'm just gonna mention them briefly, but I really wanna pick these up. So I have Just Like Home by Sarah Gailey. And all I really know about this one is that it's been compared to The Haunting of Hill House, like the Netflix show. And I love the show also, like the book that it was originally based off of, but I love the show as well. So anything that's like even slightly similar to that, I am down for. The next one that I'm excited for is What Moves the Dead by T. King Fisher. This one I don't know too much about, but I have heard it's a retelling of the Edgar Allan Poe story called The Fall of the House of Usher. I don't know that story, but I know Edgar Allan Poe in general. And from what I can tell from this description that I'm looking up right now, it follows a soldier who receives word that their childhood friend is fallen ill and they end up going to this like remote countryside in this ancestral home to figure out what to do with the friend, I guess, and help them out. But it's got like 
a nightmare of fungal growths and possessed wildlife, and it's surrounded by a dark pulsing lake. Like all of this sounds fantastic. It's also reminding me a little bit of Mexican Gothic. So I'm excited for this one. Next I have the Bone Orchard. I can't say that word for some reason by Sarah A. Mueller. And this one seems so interesting because I think it's a bit of a fantasy, but what the like short description says is that it's a fascinating whodunit set in a lush gothic world of secrets and magic where a dying emperor charges his favorite concubine with solving his own murder and preventing the culprit, which undoubtedly is one of his three terrible sons, from taking control of the empire. That entire description sounds so cool. Like the idea of like his concubine solving his murder, but also all this crazy stuff going on. I just think it's gonna be so cool. So I'm really excited for this one. And then the last new release that seems really fun for the fall is The Book Eaters by Sunny Dean. And this one is sort of set in the Yorkshire Moors and it follows a secret line of people for whom books are food. And from there, they actually retain all of the knowledge within the book. From there, it follows our main character, Devon, who is part of the family, the secret line of people. But unfortunately for Devon, her son is born with a rare condition for a hunger, not of books, but for human minds, which seems so cool. So I'm really excited for this one because just the idea of like consuming a book and like its contents into your brain, it seems so fascinating to me, but also this added horrific element of like this child who has developed this different appetite seems super interesting. So yeah, I can't wait to pick this one up sometime soon. So with that said, those are all the books that I wanted to recommend for this ultimate guide to fall book wrecks. I have been meaning to do this video for so long, so I'm so glad I finally got to do it. And hopefully I can do an updated version next year once I've read more spooky, fun fall books. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Let me know which type of fall recommendation is your favorite. So whether you like horror, gothic horror, or like literary fiction, or dark academia, whatever it is. And let me know a book that you're hoping to read off this list or one that you would recommend to me. I am always looking for more fall book recommendations. So definitely leave those down below. And thank you so, so much for watching this video. If you wanna get more updates on my reading and my daily life, I would highly recommend going and checking out my Instagram, Twitter, Goodreads, and TikTok. And I will see you in my next video. So please remember that this story ain't over. Bye.